Hello my friends, today we're back in Luminar Neo and we will be talking about histogram and clipping warnings. So I will start with this image and if you do not see your histogram, go to edit and you see I have no histogram over here at the top. In order to bring up the histogram, you have to go to view, show histogram. Another way, let's uh, unclick that. I'm going to go back to view and unclick it. Another way to bring up the histogram is by right clicking on your image and then cl click show histogram. Before we start talking about the histogram, it's important to know uh, what is a histogram. Histogram is a graph to measure the brightness in your image. The horizontal axis moves from the pure black over here on the very left through the shadows, midtones are right here in the middle, then you have highlights and pure whites. Now, when we looked at this, this histogram, we see all of our channels, blue, green, and red, RGB channels. If you click straight on the histogram, you can see each channel individually. So we have the red channel, we have the green channel, and we have the blue channel. If you click one more time, you will see the luminosity channel. And then click again and you see all the RGB channels again. Most of the time you will use this or just the you know luminosity channel. Now that we have our histogram and we know that we have the very blacks on the left, very white on the right, and everything in the between, it's from the shadows, midtones, and highlights. Let's see how we read this and how it could help us edit our photos because it's very, very helpful to use a histogram in order to get perfect exposure. In this image, we can see our histogram kind of sits perfectly in, in the middle. Uh, we have some very blacks, we have some very whites, we have a lot of midtones. So this, I would say it's a perfectly exposed image. Let's check for that. If we, uh, if you hover over on the right, oops, I'm sorry, I clicked by, by the mistake. A shortcut to bring in the clipping warnings, it's J. So if you click J on your keyboard, then these two little dots will show up. So now we have our clipping warnings on. What is a clipping warning? Well, I will show you right now. If I move the white, for example, to the right, you will see at some point we are starting to get this red overlay on our image, and that is where we are clipping our white. That means we're blowing up the whites and we have zero detail on that portion. It's just pure white. The same thing with the blacks. If I bring the blacks to the left to get them more black, then we are getting this blue overlay and the blue overlay means that has no detail, it's just pure black. So when you have your clipping warnings on and if you see that red or the blue, that means you are clipping or crushing shadows, clipping highlights, crushing shadows. That is the term it's used in photography to t when you're talking about blowing up highlights or just losing detail into the blacks. So now with all the settings reset in here, we can see we are not clipping any of the highlights. So we have perfectly exposed highlights and we are clipping a tiny little bit of the blacks right here on these trees. Now, clipping highlights is usually a big no-no in photography, unless you are doing like backlit photography or you want a pure white background. Often used for, let's say, when you sell items on Amazon, they will require you to have a white background. And a lot of the times you will choose to completely blow out the background, but you still have to be careful and mindful not to blow out your product. Now, crushing your blacks, it is acceptable. And in fact, you would want to crush a little bit of your blacks, not too much, but you do want to have some pure blacks because that will give your image some contrast. And usually you get a more pleasing result instead of a flat washed out image. You see, if I would raise the blacks up, you just, the image gets more flatter and flatter. So let's take some different examples to see how we can fix exposure. We know this image had a good exposure, but what about this image? By looking at it, I can kind of tell that I have no information in these black parts and also the sky, it is probably overexposed. So I'm going to go to my edits. I have my histogram. I can just, uh, yeah, I can press the J to show the clipping warnings or I can just manually click on this uh, highlights and blacks um, little buttons. And now we are seeing where we are clipping our highlights. 
we see we're missing part of the sky information there. And my favorite tool to bring um, back the highlights into the sky is Super Contrast. If you do not understand how to use Super Contrast, go into my Luminar Neo playlist. I think I have over 70 videos on Luminar Neo explaining every single tool on Luminar Neo. And I have a specific video about Super Contrast, how to use it with examples. So if I move the highlights contrast to the right, and then the balance to darken the highlights to the right, I'm pretty much almost bringing out all that information in the sky. Now that was not enough. I could get out of super contrast and apply it one more time, or I could go to develop and just bring down the exposure a little bit. Now you notice when I bring down the exposure, I'm losing more and more details onto the blacks over here. But what I could do is just bring down the exposure and then now because we have the handy masking, I can just use a linear gradient and just bring it down on the top to just bring down the highlights into the sky. And now we have zero clipping into the sky. We brought back all the information and now we are just crushing the shadows and we can work with that separately. For example, we'll get out of develop, go back into develop, and then we can just bring the blacks up a little bit. We can bring some shadows up a little bit and we can pretty much fix that. And then if that becomes too flat, we can also just mask it on the person. So let's take another example. And this time we will talk about what the histogram should look like. And let's see, I'm going to show you this image. And if I go to my histogram, we can see that the histogram is kind of evenly placed. We have blacks, we have midtones, we have highlights. And it's important to understand that histogram is just the representation of your um, luminosity into your image. So most people will mistaken by thinking that your histogram has to be perfectly in the middle. So you will have just one peak into the midtones, and that is very wrong. Uh, once you understand that the histogram is just a representation of your luminosity in your image, then it makes more sense. For example, what do I mean by that? I feel like I'm going in circles. And this image, we pretty much have no pure blacks. We have no shadows, it's just all highlights and whites. So this histogram represents exactly that. My peak, it's right on the very left, very right uh, side of the histogram. And I have very, very few midtones, which is mostly just these shadow parts. And um, that is okay. This is a good exposed image. Actually, I do think this is clipping a little bit on this side. Let's see. So if I do, oh, we are clipping. So I can go just to my develop and bring down the highlights. And now we have a perfectly exposed image. And even though our histogram is not in the middle, the peak of our histogram is not in the middle, it's okay because this is what represents our image. We only have bright parts in our images. I hope that makes sense. And similarly to that, we can have an image that is very dark tone like this. And how do you think the histogram would look for this image? Well, if you thought the histogram would be all jammed into the left side of the histogram, then you are correct. Because here we have no midtones and we have no highlights, we have no whites. It's pretty much all in the very shadows. Now, this image, it's an interesting edit because we, even though we really have no information on the outer edge of the image, we are not clipping any of the shadows. And that is because I believe when this image was edited, the blacks were lifted and then was applied a color to it. So we have no pure blacks because we have this brown tone, like a very dark brown. So you see nothing it's clipping right now. And in order to clip it, I'll have to bring the blacks pretty aggressively to the left to, you know, get that clipping warning. So but in this case, the histogram, it's very accurate representing our image. Let's do one more example. We have this image over here, which I think is pretty awesome. And let's see, I'm gonna click J on my keyboard to show the warning. 
and we are clipping nothing. In fact, I believe we can even raise the exposure a little bit to make it brighter without clipping the highlight. So you see I'm going past uh, the correct exposure and then I'll slowly, slowly bring it back. And that is a greatly exposed image. Is greatly a word? That is a correctly exposed image. Now, if you take this example, this is a completely different example. And this one, we can see that we do have pure blacks on the outside. So if I go to edit and then turn on my clipping warnings, we can see most of this image, it is underexposed. But in this case, this is acceptable because I believe this was the photographer's choice to make a completely black background. And that is very acceptable. So keep in mind when you are adjusting your exposure and your contrast, that would all affect your tones into your image. And um, it's okay to crush the blacks a little bit. You just really do not want to clip your highlights. And that's mostly for print because if you would print an image and it has blown out highlights that in those parts where it's pure white, your printer will not going to lay down any ink in there. So you'll just have the bare paper. So that's why it's good to avoid blowing out your highlights. And if you do need to print something that really has blown out highlights, then there are little tricks of adding a little overlay of a very faded color, just so your printer will print something in there and you do not have just the bare paper. I hope this was helpful and you learned a little bit about the histogram and I hope it makes sense to you and you know how to use the clipping warnings. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I will see you in my next video.